All right. Hey, everybody. I uh, just figured I'd do a couple examples for you. These problems aren't too bad today in today's class for trig problems, trig baby, because we've been dealing with ratios for a while now, right? Ever since we did the similarity chapter, dealing with ratios. But I'm giving you two slices of problems here, this one and this one, because we have different sides given to us as known and then different unknowns. You'll see in a second here. Written exercises, find X, corrects the nearest tenth. Use the table on page 271. We're actually going to use a calculator. I prefer if you use a calculator with this. It's easier. It's better for you long run. And it's going to get you more precise answers because calculators don't round quite as quickly as the trig table on page 271 looks like. So get your tangents ready on this calculator. Make sure you are in degree mode, my friends, not radian mode. The classic mistake that you could find yourself stuck in. Why doesn't my answer make sense? Ah, well, I'm not in degree mode. I'm in radian mode. You want to be in degree mode, okay? All right, so this one here, check this one out here. Here we got our theta. We got our reference angle right here, 61 degrees. So we know that 61 degrees has a unique opposite over adjacent ratio. This is its opposite side, and this is its adjacent side, right? So we have the two sides here. 100 is given to us. That's opposite, right? Here we got the, the acute angle of the right triangle right here, and this is the leg opposite that angle. Right? So this side here, this leg here is adjacent to it because it's, it's not the hypotenuse. Remember, it's not the hypotenuse. Okay, This is a hypotenuse here. It's a hypotenuse here. Right, The hypotenuse is opposite the right angle. We don't care about that now because we're just studying the tangent ratio here. So if I have a 61 degree angle, this angle here is made up of that ray and that ray. And this ray contains the adjacent leg. Okay, So the side of the angle that's not a hypotenuse is the adjacent side here. So we know the opposite side. We don't know the adjacent, but that's okay because we know the ratio that this is supposed to be in. The ratio of 100 to X has got to be the same as any opposite over adjacent ratio is for a 61 degree angle in a right triangle, right? That's the called the tangent ratio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my equation now as tangent of 61 degrees right? That ratio, that magical ratio that we have stored in page 271, stored in the calculator for us, true for the 61 degree angle in any right triangle. It's opposite over adjacent ratio is going to be equal to whatever the calculator is going to tell us it is in a second here. Um, just as is whatever it is in this particular right triangle with that 61 degree acute angle here. So it's going to equal its opposite over adjacent, 100 over X, okay? So I'm including this problem number five because this is a little bit harder. I got X in the denominator. We're gonna get back to that in a second, okay? So here, 100 over X, that is a ratio in this right triangle. And what do we know it has to equal? It has to equal the tangent of 61 degrees. Whatever that unique ratio is, opposite over adjacent for any 61 degree angle in any right triangle, it's gonna hold, right? Because any right triangle with a 61 degree reference angle is gonna be similar to any other right triangle with a uh, uh, reference angle at 60, uh, 61 degrees in that right triangle here. Okay, tangent of 61 degrees. I'm gonna do that on my calculator here. Ah, I can type it out here. I can also, boom, got my calculator right here. It's just better if you do it in your calculator because then you don't have to round quite as much here. So I'm gonna do 61 degrees. Okay, say rad there. That means I'm in degree mode. And you rad, okay, yeah, I am rad. I'm gonna do degree mode. And I'm gonna take the tangent, okay? Does my answer make sense? I think so because it looks like this, so 100, this looks like this is about two times as long as that side. So I'm feeling pretty good. Maybe a little bit less than two times as long as that side. So 1.8, yeah, this does feel like it's probably about 1.8 longer, okay? Tangent of, of 61 degrees equals this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace tangent of 61 with its decimal approximation. This just means that the opposite side is about 1.804 times as long as the adjacent side is here. So we know that 100 divided by whatever this is equals about 1.804, okay? So I've replaced this. So now I could see a few people in this class kind of panicking, being like, well, what do I do? What do I do right now? My recommendation for you is, we've been practicing cross multiplication for a long time now. Um, so I might cross multiply, okay? 1.0804 times, we use your means extremes property. Remember that from chapter four, means extremes property, chapter five, um, means extremes property. So 1.804 times by X is one point. 804x and 1 times 100 is 100. Okay, so I'll do that here. 1.804x equals 100. And then what am I doing next? Well, I just have a 1.804x's. I want to figure out what 1x is equal to. <clears throat> I'm dividing both sides by 1.804. So if you're not thinking much, you just want to do this kind of uh, just let the math take you away. Maybe you're doing it this way. I can maybe talk about maybe a slightly quicker way. Okay, 100 divided by 1.804. 
So uh, I might do, let's see if I can store this answer. I don't think I can I calculate it like this, but so I'll just, I'll just have to approximate it. All right, 1. 100 divided by 1.084, sorry, no, 100 divided by 1.804 uh, is going to equal about 55.4. We have to round to the nearest tenth, so I'm going to round to 55.4 in length here. And that answer, I'd say, makes sense. It's just maybe a little over half whatever this 100 is here for that 61 degree angle. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe a quicker thing. Maybe actually, if you're thinking really ahead here, if you want to actually save yourself some time on a problem like this, check it out. This is what you can actually do. When you have it set up like this here, one thing you technically can do, just as you can move your means of a proportion, remember, I could swap 100 and 1, OK, but I can also swap my extremes. That's actually a legal move. You can actually swap extremes. You can do an extreme swap, if you remember that from chapter five. So what you could do in this situation, if you have an X in the denominator, is you can swap it whatever is over here on the other side of equals, the numerator that's over here. So a valid move from property proportions could have been saying that X would equal 100 over 1.08, sorry, 1.804, and that would have just saved you a step. It would have saved you some work over here. You would have divided right away, and you still would have gotten 55.4, okay? We'll practice more problems like this probably on Wednesday. All right, number six here. Uh, this is a little bit easier. So just want to show you a different slice of things here. Here you got your tangent of 25 degrees. That's how you're starting out all these problems. Well, I'm going to talk, uh, all I know for my, in my terms of my trigonometric ratio so far is the tangent. So I'm just going to do the opposite over adjacent from whatever my reference angle is here, right? Here's my theta. So my theta, right? That's got to be my adjacent leg. If this is my hypotenuse right here, right? Hypotenuse of the triangle. So this is my hypotenuse side. This is my adjacent leg. There we go. So I'm going to put that in the denominator of my tangent ratio. Okay, so my tangent 25 degrees. That's just a constant ratio for any right triangle with a 25 degree angle. And that's going to equal whatever, well, whatever X is divided by 7.1 is going to be equivalent to whatever that decimal Right, whatever that decimal is, tangent 25 degrees that our calculator stored, and what we have on page 271 stored. Okay, so then I got X here. Look, and this problem's a bit easier here. What can I do? Well, I could replace the, excuse me, I can replace the 25, tangent 25 degrees right now with what that's equal to on page 271, but I might actually isolate X first so I can just solve the problem. That's another way that you can do it, maybe save yourself some time. So what I'll do is I'll actually, if I want to isolate X here, X is being divided by 7.1, right? Whatever X is divided by 7.1 equals that special ratio, the tangent 25 degrees. So if I just multiply both sides by 7.1, okay, right, I, I cancel out that dividing and I end up with getting X over here equal to 7.1 times the tangent of 25. Well, what is the tangent of 25? I can do that in my calculator here. I'm in degree mode. Yes, I am. I just verified that there. I hit tangent and I hit 25 and I got 0.4. 663, right? 0.4663. So um, 7.1 times by 0 0.4663. You might question it. Does my answer make sense? I might do it on a different calculator from being really paranoid. 0.6663. Yeah, there we go. And it does make sense. Look at this here. 25 degree angle. That's pretty acute. It's smaller than 45 degrees. So we know the tangent has to be less than one, right? Remember that, that, that from your exit ticket yesterday. Tangents uh, of degree angles that are less than 45, less than one, because the opposite side is smaller. Opposite side looks like it's about half as long as this adjacent side. Is it exactly half? Not quite. It's actually less than half. It's 46% of the length of this adjacent side here. Okay. Anyways, I'll take that tangent of 25 and I will uh, tangent 25 degrees, which is 0.46 or so. And I'll leave it in my calculator so I get a more precise answer. And I'll multiply it by that 7.1. So I'm basically finding about 46% of whatever that adjacent leg is here. And uh, that's going to be what my opposite leg has got to be, OK? So um, totally, engineers totally do this, right? They totally use trig to like figure out, well, I got to move things like this angle that I'm designing here. And then I have this part this long. What, how long is my other part going to have to be to complete this like thing that I'm propping up or something like that, right? Um, you know, I, my uh, uh, brother-in-law is an engineer who works at uh, Google. And he's like, oh, yeah, tell him. I use trig all the time. Tell him I use trig all the time. He's like, oh, cool. He's a hardware guy. He, he designs, designs phones and whatnot here. Uh, so anyways, uh, there we go. Uh, I said to the nearest tenth, so I just need to do 3.3 uh, about x. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys for watching. That's basically two slices of the problems. That's kind of what I wanted to show you was that, you know, if you have the variable in the denominator, you could just swap it with tangent of 61, or you could just cross multiply, right? 
cross multiply. When in doubt, cross multiply, okay? Or you can do an extreme swap. That might make your life a little bit easier and get the X in the numerator on the other side. Um, when the X is in the numerator over here, it's pretty easy. You just multiply both sides by the denominator, replace the tangent of 25 degrees with whatever that ratio is, whatever that decimal ratio is, and uh, go ahead and solve them, then you're good to go. All right, enjoy the rest of the problems here. Good luck. I will see you guys tomorrow on Wednesday.